Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. I am grateful. Let me start with some home thoughts today. I'm looking forward to being at the Syracoy Lodge in Lera over the weekend. They tweeted this photograph from July the 9th. During your Kenya visit, Barack Obama, we invite you for the ultimate safari experience at Syracoy and posted this photograph. Um, I went to Bastille Day in uh, Nairobi yesterday and the French Embassy sits right on Kibera and you're there drinking fine champagne thinking to yourself I'm right on the edge of things. I'll put up a photograph um, uh, of the flowers, they were very beautiful and one with the ambassador. New scientist, here's that great pic taken at 766,000 kilometers from Pluto. And indeed it was a tremendous photograph as well. Political reflections forget, this is Robert Fisk in The Independent, forget about Obama's legacy and all the technical twaddle in the 80-page agreement, 100 pages in Farsi, because Iran is now on course to put on the dead Shah's mantle as policeman in the Gulf. Middle East seismologists should get ready for the earthquake Goodbye, therefore, to the overwhelming influence of the Sunni Muslim nations which gave their sons to the 9-11 crimes against humanity, provided the world with Osama bin Laden which supported the Taliban, and then the Sunni Islamists of Iraq and Syria. And finally, goodbye to those emirs and princes who support ISIS. Washington is sick and tired of the decrepit princes of the Gulf, their pure lectures, their tiresome wealth unless it's paid for US weaponry, and their grotty civil war in Yemen. Shia Iran is now the good guy on the block. And I re referenced this in that piece I wrote in 2013 uh, when I spoke about how this was breaking a losing sequence of relations all the way back to 1979, and I spoke about the three legs of the stool the US, Saudi Arabia and Israel and uh, you can see uh, that those two legs are very unhappy with this agreement. I said yesterday the Iran deal is a game changer, I stand by that. Pete D'Souza tweeted last night President Obama talks with the national security staff after being notified about the nuclear agreement with Iran. And then uh, I like this photograph of celebrations overnight in Tehran that I found off Twitter. Uh, Kamal of Al Jazeera tweeted the talks, the result, Iran deal. Um, so I think it is a momentous moment and a resetting of relations across the Middle East. And I think uh, you'll find Iran will prove a much more stabilizing factor than someone like Saudi Arabia, frankly. A prominent Tibetan monk has died in a Chinese prison in Sichuan province. Tenzin Delek Rinpoche was serving a life sentence according to the Central Tibetan Administration which operates out of the Indian city of Dharamsala. In 2002 he had been found guilty of setting off explosions inciting separation of the state according to Xinhua. Protesters had gathered to demand the return uh, to Nyakchuka of the body of Tenzin, whose unexplained death at the age of 65 in the 13th year of a life sentence in prison was revealed by Tibetan sources and confirmed by local Chinese authorities on July the 12th. Tenzin was widely popular among Tibetans for his efforts to protect Tibetan culture and the environment had been in prison since 2002 following what rights groups and supporters described as a wrongful conviction on a bombing charge. The Chinese periphery is a powder keg. Though police opened fire to control the crowd, there were no immediate reports of injuries in the incident a Tibetan living in Australia told RFA's Tibetan service. Gabriele Corno on July the 6th tweeted Tibetan moonrise, very beautiful, have a look at it. Congo, arrest FDLR leader wanted by the ICC, this is uh, Human Rights Watch, they've put out a little video, that link is uh, on the website, this is Sylvester Mudakamura, 
military commander of the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, the FDLR. I put up a photograph on them. International markets. Let me start with Holger, who's tweeted, China FX reserves continued to decline in second quarter 2015. Magnitude surprising given near record trade surplus. I'll put up that image. Zero Hedge tweeted, everything is awesome in China. Retail sales, industrial production and GDP all mysteriously crush expectations. I responded that China 7% GDP is simply not credible. The Shanghai Composite Index tumbled 4.2% uh, when I checked and then I had some meetings. 689 stocks remain halted on the mainland exchanges and another 790 falling by the 10% day limit. Sellers were locked out of about 50% of the Chinese market. Currencies, Euro 110.22 dollar index, 96.60 Japanese yen, 123.55, the pound, 156.29. Um, the Aussie, when I looked last, well, let me go and check here, 0.7457. Indian rupee, steady as you like, 63.385. South Korean, 111.4256 has been slipping of late. Brazil, Real, 314.14. Um, uh, and the, the Egyptian pound, 782.99. The Rand, 1236.78. Dollar index, I think, goes to 100. I'll put up a three month chart and then 110. Euro dollar, I think it goes towards parity. The way it's traded post Greece is informing us that it's trading heavy. Um, I like this photograph from Bloomberg. The room is home to rare liqueurs from the UK and around the world. The Connaught. This is a bar of the Connaught. Look pretty inviting. Gold, we're now at 11.5460. Sell it. Crude oil, it's tricky, but it's going lower. Um, Last time I checked, we were in uh, uh, U.S. light crude around the 52.80 level. I like this image from Nanex LLC. Coffee was first mover by a second of yesterday's 8.30 news release. Most active futures 10 seconds before and after the announcement. Sub-Saharan Africa, quartz, African major currencies have been taking a beating this year. Uh, over the last few months, the value of some African currencies have been decimated. It's been a sub-Saharan bloodbath in 2015, I said. This sell-off has trashed petro currencies like the Kwanzaa and the Nigerian Naira, which is holding on by its fingernails but collapsing on the street. So what explains this precipitous slide? One reason I said our expectations are that Janet Yellen has a pistol cocked and is all ready to raise interest rates this year. And then, you know, we've had this external spillover effect of post Greece where investors are more concerned about getting their money back than the rate of interest they might receive. Rwanda's constitution, if it's changed, will allow President Paul Kagame to run for a third term. There were a bunch of signatures and I think they're going to hold a referendum about it. I wrote a piece over the weekend and I said, you know, come on, look at his performance. And I think that's the point with President Kagame. Kaguta Museveni uh, tweeted, I am off to Burundi to establish a dialogue among warring political factions in that country. I'll put up that photograph. Then Red Pepper tweeted that a mammoth crowd welcomed M7 to Burundi. Jane's Intelligence Review is saying that the armed attack on the Burundi army by militant group indicates increased civil war risk. Uh, an unidentified armed group of 300, that's a big number, to 400 fighters in military uniforms attacked Burundian security positions in Kayanza province in the country's northwest on 10th July before subsequently withdrawing back into the nearby Kibera National Park. South African all shares up 4.69% year to date. Dollar Rand, as I said, 1236.78. I think it's going to the top of the channel, which is around 1270. Egyptian pound, 782.99. Egyptian EGX 30 bounced yesterday 1.32%. Mohammed Buhari has yet to name a single minister. He has finally replaced the military top brass, but there is no defence minister to oversee them. 
Uh, he has not selected his chief of staff or any policy aides. He has finally replaced the military top brass, no defence minister. For many, the appointments are the most basic decisions he is expected to make. And while they will not be perfect, not doing anything at all suggests fear and uncertainty. The combination of slowness and secrecy is raising concerns among Buhari's own supporters on Nigeria's vociferous social media platforms. He has begun to be mocked as Baba Go Slow or Sluggish Old Man. Veteran analysts such as political scientist Jibril Ibrahim, head of the Center for Democracy and Development in Abuja, have asked how long Nigeria can operate without a formal government. In a July 5 column, Ibrahim warned that entrusting power to the president's coterie of committed believers risked alienating Buhari's party and souring public opinion. President Buhari would do himself and Nigeria well by immediately making his appointments. And I can't agree with that more. And I think in part that it's been a very, very slow start. Nigerian All Share has given back all of its post-election pop. It's down 9.47% year-to-date. Ghana Stock Exchange is minus 0.4% over the last 12 months, but we've had a tremendous rally in the SEDI and also in Ghana Eurobonds. Last time I checked, the Ghana 26 uh, um, is, is trading uh, below 9%, as is the 23s, which is quite a rebound. 94 and a half, 95 handle now. Kenya, the, uh, our euro bonds have performed relatively well as well. 103.50, 104.25 bid offer for the uh, 2019s and for the 2024s, 101.50 to 102.25. Din Fin Kenya tweeted big media turnout, local and international, at Westgate Mall press tour ahead of Saturday reopening. I put up that photograph. Westgate owner Alex Trachtenberg says they are working with Kenya's anti-terror police to boost security. I'll put up a photograph of Westgate uh, the day the Christmas lights were switched on some 2,039 days ago. And of course Westgate on fire 659 days ago. Kenya shilling 101.60 earlier today and that's against an intraday low of 103.95 a few sessions back. Nairobi All Shares down 2.76% and uh, that's a fresh 2015 low. NSE20 is down 8.215% at new 2015 lows as well. The stock market has been under pressure um, and, some, and we've seen a significant slip up here. Currency also is so a bit of a double whammy. If you want to tra track the stock market, don't forget just register on rich.co.ke, get a password. Then go to Rich Live, and during nine, from 9.30 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Kenya time, you can track the market in real time and see what's happening. And these are volatile markets where people need to keep on top of things. Once again, thank you for stopping by.